Today's update, why we don't already have a universal cure. February 8, 2020 by Anna Von writes. Earlier this week I disclosed the reason why, despite often having supermajority control of all the political apparatus in Washington, D.C., the Democratic Party has never delivered actual relief to the poor and working-class constituents that keep them in power. They can't deliver the relief they promise for fear of losing their constituent base. They have to keep the people hungry, and dumbed down, to stay in power. So that's what they do. They talk, talk, talk and they, one, throw money at problems in a way that amounts to wasting public money on their political cronies, or, two, sideline real appropriations via backdoor money laundering back to themselves, like the Clinton Foundation scandal, or, three, find a way to tax or regulate the potential benefit away, so that no substantial gains are ever realized by the folks at street level. I call this last-mentioned ploy, giving with one hand and taking away with the other. The typical Democrat in D.C. thinks, oh, sure, I'll increase the minimum wage, but then, I'll also increase inflation to devalue the currency, so the poor slob is even worse off, but I will appear to have done them a favor. Things like that. Thinking like that. And this, no joke, is how our country has been run by these felons for the last 160 years. Yesterday, I was catching, in passing, an interview taking place on one of the conservative radio talk shows, Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity or Mark Levin. The host was interviewing a pastor from an inner-city African-American church somewhere in this country, I didn't catch where. The pastor was, rightly, observing that all the improvement in minority employment statistics has yet to hit home in the most severely impacted neighborhoods, but he clearly didn't know why, and he was still stubbornly defending his Democratic champions and blaming Donald Trump for the circumstance. Whoa. Successive generations of Democratic Party plunkers have eaten away the industrial base of this nation, curtailed transportation and infrastructure improvements, and used the Federal Department of Education since 1976 to make sure that more and more Americans, especially at the low end of the totem pole, are unskilled, barely literate, bored out of their minds, and reduced to living on welfare. On purpose. This keeps their base as hungry as they need their base to be. They can tune their base up by handing out goodies while they are in power, but never enough to really solve poverty or anything else, and tune their base down when the Republicans are in office by a constant stream of propaganda and blaming and pre-election sequesters of funding for social programs. Am I the only one in America who has noticed that every four years, like clockwork, social programs get cut right before elections? And the very worst impacts are always targeted to hit places like Detroit and Chicago and New Orleans? Always? The labor unions can restrict influx of new journeymen to their ranks to keep their wages and demand parameters high, and do so, at an estimable cost to the public and the destruction of the American labor force in general. The AMA and ABBA do the same with doctors and lawyers. No doubt the same applies to federal Indian chiefs. The entire democratic agenda is actually to, quote unquote, keep the niggers down, and it always has been ever since the Civil War, if you bother to look at their voting records and the legislation they have penned. Over the decades, they have simply expanded their definition of niggers to include all the rest of us, so long as we are poor, ignorant, downtrodden, helpless, and unable to see through their chicanery and hypocrisy, the more slaves, the better. Top Democrats are among the most lily-white, most elitist, most self-aggrandizing, most crooked, most hypocritical people on this planet, and increasingly, Republicans have joined their ranks. Let's face it, the Dems have had a good thing going from their perspective, lots of backdoor money flowing, all sorts of perks to hand out, an easy scam to operate, just say one thing and do another, and chisel, chisel, chisel. So with this kind of backwards self-interested Shinola being the order of the day for the undeservedly popular Democratic Party, is it any wonder that all our institutions are adversely impacted? Our universities are dependent on money from these hacks. Our schools, especially in poor neighborhoods, are dependent on federal kickbacks, because there is no property base left to speak of. Our space program, our national health institutes, our research laboratories, even our public parks and sanitation programs have been drawn into the federal kickback dependency scam, where racketeers take all the money from the local and state levels and dole out whatever as kickbacks. And at least some of us have been dumb enough to let them do it.
So, now, with that background, here's the answer to why we living, breathing people don't already have a viable systemic cure for viral infections of all kinds worldwide, read it and weep. HTTPS colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash Todd Rider. Please consider making a small donation to help support Anna and the Living Law Firm by visiting the American States Assembly.net, scroll to the bottom and click on the Donate Now button. Thank you. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website wellnessrods.com. Thank you.